Hey there, everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how to integrate Verify Lens with your Xcode project. So you can create a simple app like this one, where we can launch Verify Lens, we can use our camera in order to scan a receipt, we can take a picture of that like this, and then upload it, and get back a list of different Verify events, and of course, the processed JSON data. So let's get into it. To start us off, we're gonna begin on our home screen and you'll want to click on settings and keys. That's because uh, all of the Verify Lens information is stored in a private CocoaPods repo. So we need to scroll all the way down to Lens CocoaPods and create a new access key. You can do that by clicking on this button, add an access key and typing in your first name your last name, and finally, your email. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this account here. You can do the same on your end, uh, but it's very important to note that this password will only be displayed once. So make sure you store it somewhere safe for future reference because there's no other way to retrieve it other than by generating a new key. So go ahead and do that right now. So now we're looking at the actual code of the project I'm going to be breaking down. Now, although I've already installed uh, Verify Lens into this project, I will quickly break down how to do so for you. So the first thing you have to do is in your project, you wanna make sure you're using CocoaPods. Uh, if you don't know how to use CocoaPods, you haven't used it before, there are plenty of resources online, uh, but just once you install CocoaPods and you make a new project with it, you can go ahead and open up your pod file and you're going to want to configure it this way uh, with these two source lines. You would need this to install Lens. And of course, also include the pod, verify Lens, and then optionally a version number inside your targets. So you can go ahead, you can save this, and now you're ready to add in your credentials and install the pods. So to do that, I'm just gonna open up terminal and you want to run this command. You're gonna run git credential approve, and then all of this stuff in here, just to make sure to replace the username and password with that username and password we generated earlier. But once that's done, you can press enter and save these credentials. Once you've saved those credentials, you can go into your project folder and then run pod install. And of course, we already installed it inside this project, uh, but at this point, you should now have Verify Lens installed and ready to go. So one thing you wanna do before you can start using Lens is that you do need to configure a couple of the target properties. And that's because Verify Lens makes use of four main privacy settings in order to make the app run smoothly. Uh, so these are listed here, you can add them to info or you can add them through an info.plist file. But these are the privacy, location always, and when in use. This is what we use to help identify areas around where someone takes the picture of the receipt. Uh, we also have photo library uses, usage description. Of course, we do want to be able to choose documents to process. Uh, we also have a privacy setting for making additions to the photo library. This is to actually save those photos and also camera usage, which is, of course, to scan the documents. So make sure you add some kind of description for all four of these. Uh, you actually need to, otherwise the app won't run. So the next thing to do is to add in your verify client ID and setting information in order to have that accessed by Lens. And I'll show you how to access that now. You want to go back to your keys and this is actually where you'll find all this information. We need our environment URL, we need the client ID, we need the username and the API key. And now we can start adding them to our project. Now there are a number of different ways you could save them. The way I personally am doing it is I add them in as environment variables by going to product, going to scheme and then edit scheme. And this is where I add in everything. I have my client ID, I have the username, API key and URL. Uh, like I said, this is how I do it, but there are plenty of other ways you could save it, uh, whether you just want to embed it straight up or if you want to do it this way. Now we'll start by taking a look at some of the code inside this project. 
I'm going to start off by looking at this Lens Manager class. Uh, this is something I made to communicate between the UI and Verify Lens. So it does stuff like configuring, uh, it calls the show camera function, and also establishes some event listeners. So to start off, we'll take a look at this configure function. Now this is where you will be using your client ID, your username, API key, and URLs that we added inside our environment variables. Now if you added it the same way I did, you would access it as uh, just a part of the uh, process info. But if you want, you could have embedded it directly or you can add it in a different way. But overall, we're just going to be taking these four main things and we're going to be adding it to this verify lens credentials structure. So now we're going to start taking a look at some of the code inside this project. And I'm going to begin by taking a look at this lens manager class. This is something I wrote to communicate between the UI and Verify Lens, doing things like bridging the gap between configuration, uh, some show camera functions, and also setting some delegates. So first, let's look at the configure function. This is where we make use of those keys and URL information that we added inside our environment variables earlier. Now, if you added it in the same way I did, you'll access it as a part of process info. Uh, but of course, you can also embed this directly if you want. Once you do that though, you can go ahead and you can use them inside Verify Lens credentials and add them in with the client ID, username, API key, and also the URL. The next thing to do is do our settings. These are Verify Lens settings. And now Verify Lens does come with a number of different settings. Uh, if you want more information on that, you can always take a look at the Verify Lens documentation. But in this case, I'm just modifying two settings. I'm modifying show document types and also document types. So what this does is it just forces every document type to be classified as receipt rather than letting Verify decide on its own. So this is just one example of something you can do. There are plenty of more functions that will change the way you process data. It'll change some of the uh, look and feel of Verify Lens, or it could also change the functionality that users have access to. But for now, I think I'll go with these settings. I'll go with these credentials. And now I will go ahead and use the Verify Lens shared configure function and configure it with these credentials and with these settings. So the next function I want to talk about is show camera. This is pretty simple. All it really does is it just shows the Verify Lens view in whatever the current UI view controller is. Uh, to get this, all I really did was I made an extension function called current UI window, which looks like this. Uh, this is something you can write on your own. There are also plenty of things online I've seen to do something similar. But all it really does is it gets whatever the current view is by checking the connected scenes, uh, getting which ones are foreground active, and then converting that to UI windows. From there, it takes those and it gets the first one, which is the key window, and then returns it. So going back here, uh, we get the view controller from that, and then we just pass it into this verify lens shared show camera function. And that's really all there is to this show camera function, which is in Lens Manager. Now the final thing I want to talk about are setting delegates. So verify communicates through the use of verify lens delegates. This is a function we use to just set the delegate to do uh, whatever we want. In this case, uh, Verify Lens Delegate is a structure which works like this. It has four main functions, which it calls for the four main events. Uh, it calls something for Verify Lens Close, Verify Lens Error, Success, and Update. And whenever e each of these events fires, it will do whatever is inside these brackets. In this case, I'm just using this generic event listener function which I'm passing in and setting with this set delegate function. So the set delegate function takes some kind of event listener, which just takes in a JSON variable of the type string to any dictionary. All it does is it sets the class attribute to this event listener, and then it tells Verify Lens uh, that its delegate is now the Lens Manager Verify Lens Delegate. And that's all there really is to it when it comes to this Lens Manager class. So now let's take a look at how the UI works. So now let's start looking at some of the UI. Now we go into here, we only really have one window, which is the Lens Console view. And in this view, we of course have our Lens Manager, 
And we also have a list of lens events, a list of strings. Now, if you recall from the intro, this is just a list of the different events that fire off from Verify Lens. And this is where we'll store all of them. If we actually look into the view stack, we have some text that just checks that this is empty. If it's empty, then we just prompt the user to try out Lens. If it's not empty, then that's where we go ahead and list out all of the different events. The next thing we have is this button called Launch Verify Lens. And this is where we run all of those functions from before. We set delegate to this event listener, which I'll go into later. We also configure it. And then finally, we show the camera. We show the lens view. So now let's take a look at what the event listener actually is. Uh, it's all pretty simple, nothing too crazy. We are really just passing in JSON data in the form of a string to any dictionary and turning it into a string with a string function and then adding it to our list of lens events. And this is all the string function really does. It just takes in JSON data and then it serializes it into a pretty printed string and then returns it. So this is pretty much the entirety of the code. Uh, after every single verify lens event, we just take the output, stringify it, add it to our log, and then display it. And so now let's go through this again and see the app in action. So here we are back with our application. We have the tap the button to try out lens prompt because we don't have any lens, lens events yet. So we'll go ahead and we'll launch lens with the button. I'll uh, keep the current photo selection, but we already have a receipt on the table and Lens recognizes that. So it's drawing this green box around it. This is actually something you can enable or disable with your Lens settings. But we'll go ahead and we'll take a nice picture of this. It's a little crumpled, but I believe Lens can still get it. And we will submit that to verify. So we have all of these Lens events now because we launched the app and everything. And we also have this processed verified data, the extracted receipt information that we wanted. So we have things like uh, line items, we have total costs, and we really have all the information you'd want from a receipt. That's all there is to it. This is how you integrate Verify Lens with your Xcode project.